Hi everyone, how are you feeling? I like it, this is a nice packed house. Thank Yay. you for showing up on a Saturday. Today's theme for Diversity Speaks, it's all about a call to action. Cause I'll be honest with you, I've sat through or have been a part of so many panels about this topic. And I think today what I would love is if we could actually also talk about what would it take for us as fellow creatives to move the needle forward, move the ball forward, right? So let's, let's do that. So let's start off with uh, a little bit of the intros and then we'll frame it out and we'll chat. My name is Jenny Yang. I am a stand-up comedian, actor, and writer and I uh, produced the first ever mostly female Asian American stand-up comedy tour called Disoriented Comedy. It started in July of 2012 and we have already st also started the, the Comedy Comedy Festival, colon A Comedy Festival, which is an Asian American comedy festival. Um, and I also really love to comment on whitewashing and representation issues, helping to start the um, thank you Matt Damon hashtag, uh, amongst other things. <laughs> I'm Ali Maki. Uh, I'm originally from Seattle, Washington, and I moved out to LA when I was 14 years old to pursue acting, which is very exciting. And um, now I'm, I just finished the second season of the show Wrecked, which is on TBS. Yes. It's a very fun <laughs> sitcom. Um, and I'm so excited to be here to discuss with the lovely Jenny Yang. She's the best. Uh, hi everybody, my name is Phil Yu. I uh, run a blog called Angry Asian Man. Um, uh, but, but please call me Phil. Um, uh, I started, it, the, the blog has been around for uh, 16 years. It started in 2001. Uh, it's the longest running, most widely read independent Asian American blog covering the Asian American community, and uh, we, I do talk a lot about uh, the issues we're gonna talk about here today, uh, doing for a very long time, and uh, I'm a long time collaborator of Jenny Yang, so, uh, and uh, in another, if this was another panel, I would be in that seat and she'd be over here, so this is, this is cool. <laughs> Hi, uh, my name's Kelvin Yu, and I am, um, I was on the show Friends. No. I, um, you were the one. I created, I played Frasier on the show Friends. Um, I am a writer-producer on the show Bob's Burgers, and I also uh, am working on the show Master of None on Netflix, and I'm excited to be here. Hi, I'm Gloria Fan, and I currently work over at Fox 21 TV Studios. I uh, started as just the like lone Asian girl in Orange County going, wait, there must be much more out there. I uh, found myself really, really far at UCLA. It felt far at the time. <laughs> and um, found myself from South Campus going to North Campus saying, wait a minute, not into this biochemistry stuff. This is n not for me. And went into producing for almost 20 years and wanted to tell stories in television and found myself at CBS and then now at Fox. So excited to be here. Hi guys, uh, my name's Leonardo Nam. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm an actor. I, uh, I'm, uh, I'm nervous right now. Uh, I grew up in Australia, um, uh, and I'm, a, I'm an actor, I direct, uh, and uh, a painter. Um, hey everybody, I'm Bruce, uh, Bruce Terry Chung, um, Vietnamese Chinese American. I uh, grew up in Hong Kong and um, raised in California, New York. Uh, I'm very humbled and excited to be here with so many of my creative heroes. And, um, I'm an independent filmmaker. Um, I've worked mostly as a, as a cinematographer, but I'm, I'm here in the festival with my first feature, uh, Don't Come Back from the Moon. And um, yeah, hey, hey guys. You know, the title of this panel is Whitewashing, but I just wanted to make note before we get into it that there's actually so many different types of issues that come up when it comes to representation. And just to list a few, you know, just so we get the nomenclature right. I like to use the word nomenclature. So there's a difference between yellow face, which is yellow makeup or Asian-y makeup to make a person who's not Asian, Asian. Whitewashing, right, which is white actors playing existing Asian characters. A white savior complex, thank you, my, Matt Damon, right, maybe the Great Wall. Um, invisibility, where we're just not there. Uh, stereotypes, where it's a two-dimensional or kind of a hack portrayal. So let's talk about all of it. Where are we at? You know what I mean? So um, I'd like to open up with a really beautiful quote that actually Kelvin has said in a previous interview. Um, and this is what you said. I remember seeing a poster at a video store for The Proposal with Sandra Bullock and Ryan Reynolds and thinking that will never be me. I'm never going to get that. The whole studio system, the business model, the culture works against us. The system is rigged. Yeah. 
This will be the opening of our manifesto, by the way. Um, so here's my question, you guys. How close are we to seeing Kelvin on that poster? I was actually talking about Sandra Bullock. A lot of people don't know that. I did this, <laughs> yeah, why not, did the same too? thing with Miss Congeniality and our brand is crisis. Right. Um, yeah, what would it take? I, I'm, I'm, this, I'm posing this to the entire panel. What would it take for us to get to a point where Kelvin gets to be on that movie poster? I think that, to answer your question, what, what gets us closer is um, not the guy on the poster so much as the guy who's paying for the poster. And I think, I think um, the stories... There's, first and foremost, we're in arts and entertainment, but the entertainment part is, is pretty important. It's a, it, the industry is a business. And um, so, you know, it might be cart for the, before the horse, but I think people, um, the, the audience needs to vote democratically with their dollar, and they're doing that. We're seeing shows like Master of None or shows like uh, Mindy Kaling, uh, the Mindy Project, like succeed for multiple seasons fresh off the boat, obviously. And so... Um, they're already speaking, and the industry will follow quickly. It's so much faster than you think. And so I, I don't think it's that far before, you know, that long before somebody gets on a poster like that. Given all of the chatter that has been happening with Oscar So White and the push for diversity recently, in your time, from your perspective, given what you do, what have you seen has been the change for you? I've been here since I was 14, so I've kind of been able to see the evolution of where we started then and many, many years later to now. And I think when I first started, I almost felt like the industry's like awkward stepchild where I was kind of accepted but not fully accepted. I was always just there to be kind of under-sexualized or over-sexualized. Like you're always just gonna be the nail girl or you're gonna kick ass Never and be sexy. Never quite sexualized right. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Never quite, wow. Perfect mm, sexualizing. Yeah, we need that like nice little balance of sexualization. Oh God. Um, but you know, and those were the only two things that I felt like people wanted to classify me just as that. Uh, which was really hard because I'm Asian American. I'm fourth generation Japanese American. Um, my my parents were born here, my grandparents were born here, my grandma was in the, in the Japanese American internment camps. So, you know, I have a, my family's been here a very long time, so I felt like I didn't really fit into either category of being, you know, like first generation or, you know, being white in this country. So, um, but now I feel like, you know, we're, we're getting closer. Yeah. We're getting a little closer. So, but we have a long way to go. Yeah, well, um, from the... Uh, other actor side perspective, perhaps sort of any changes you've seen in the kind of roles that have been coming down the pike, or uh, other than getting older, <laughs> which uh, as a as an Asian male um, is definitely uh, something that um, is is of concern, especially uh, you know when I came to the U.S. to be an actor, I was 21, my first movie at 24, playing a high school uh, guy. Um, so, you know, I'd always be like, I want to play these older roles, but, you know, I looked younger and um, a, lo a lot of the industry um, only uh, greenlit projects where they would see a guy with my kind of a face um, only in these really young roles or like, you know, wise Buddha that's like 80 years old. <laughs> so I was like, shit, that's a really big gap in between. I feel you. <laughs> So as someone that is now, uh, am, you know, maturing, if you will, in, uh, in the industry, it is, it is nicer to know that uh, there are roles that are more textured that are coming along. Um, you know, are we f uh, where we are on the cover of the proposal? Uh, no, we're not. Um, I think, uh, I, I don't know when that will be. Um, I think we are closer to it now because we are in more of a global market. Um, Hollywood still is Hollywood, but it's a, it's a global brand as opposed to it only being a location. I'm always the guy that is the wild card because, you know, when people meet me, they go, oh, yeah, especially in, in the US, they, oh, yeah, you're Australian, what? That doesn't, you're lying. Does not compute. They're yeah. like Asian face, Australian doesn't accent. Compute and you're lying, kind of, you know? And you're I'm like, like, Australia's in Asia. Yeah. Yes. Right? <laughs> how do we sexualize you? How, se <laughs> <laughs> how, do how do I sexualize this one? Uh, uh, so, yeah, go yeah, ahead. So that's, that's kind of, I mean, you know, it kind of is almost that joke too. Like, 
that uh, if they are looking for, you know, a 60-year-old black lady, if they're willing to see me, I'm going to be in that top, like, in that top punch. Yeah. Because, you know, I, I am a kind of actor that can, if they're open to it, can bring something else to it. Yeah. Um, and so that's kind of how I've tried to, you know, navigate my way through because... Yeah. I fall in between high school and an 80-year-old Buddha. Can I just say something can, real quick? Yeah. Have you all seen uh, Leo in um, Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants 2? Yes! <laughs> I was there you gotta see night, that, actually. and you gotta get ready for the screenshots. Hot! I have actually... Hot! Okay, this is actually a good moment to, to interrupt the panel just for a second so we could bring on Kelly, who is here. Hi, Kelly. Yes, hi, Kelly. Welcome. Hi, right? Come on. Thank we forgive you. you. Thank we forgive you guys you. so much for being here. Yeah. So, you know, today's a call to action. We're just going to talk about, you know, where are we at in this whole representation thing. And so um, I was just posing, given the sort of Oscar so white, the, the drumbeat around diversity, what have you seen on the creator side, especially those who are writers or producers or executives or filmmakers, what have you seen has, that has been the change or the trend recently? You know, with the backlash against um, Ghost in the Shell and the whole like awesome hashtags about Constance Wu and John Cho like a couple years ago, and it's 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 very inspiring for me because I feel like maybe like, ten years ago um, there was no voice for that. I remember like being with my friends like complaining about like oh why 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 is Leonardo Nam on per Perfect Score the only Asian American I've seen on on a poster? You know, like why why can't we see like more of that and, and um, you know but now now there's like more discourse more discussion and it's more open and i feel like people are, are hearing it you know it's not just it's not just like insular like it's people like all over the spectrum like a worldwide and i i i'm optimistic you know there's still a lot of work to do but it's exciting for me i think yeah. gloria have you seen any examples of shifts Absolutely. I mean, when I first started and um, when I was at a production company, I would go to Asia all the time to look for these awesome remakes, you know, go to Japan and Korea. And I remember distinctly because I was a producer and I still had to sell to the big studios that I would tell the rights holders, like, you're OK that we're going to make them white, because if not, then I can't, I'm not even going to bother. I mean, that was a conversation that I would have and and I'm not proud of it but you know at the time it was the norm and that's just the way it was um, so it makes me extra excited that we're here right now talking about it and I love that Phil you were saying that you've been talking about it for a really long time because uh, I think that is the step is say no it's not right and that there is backlash and with the pup you know I think what's interesting now also with social media is that everyone does have more of a voice yep. and they could also tell their own stories. So as excited I am with the stories that we're telling, I feel like we could tell a whole generation of other Asians out there saying, you could do this too. Um, so I think that's kind of what's interesting. And then now that I'm on the Fox side, so I am now that studio, I'm excited to say, okay, how do we make it the way it's supposed to make it? So um, I feel like there is exactly that change from the past you know, decade or so. I feel like the stories that I would hear are that folks who've been in this game for at least, say, five, even five to 10 years, that there was a little bit of a hesitancy to speak up, perhaps, maybe? Would you say that that's accurate? You know, maybe if you want to chime in, there's, there's decades of experience just on this, this panel. No, I got 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know. Yeah, I do know. Yeah. I mean, but so, when, so I, yeah, first, what have you when seen? I first yeah. came to, to Hollywood, to Los Angeles, to start working 30 years ago, there were only a few of us. I mean, there was Tia, there, you know, Lucy wasn't even on the scene yet when I first came. Uh, Ming-Na wasn't even around in the first few auditions in the first couple of years that I was working. Um, and, and, so, Luck Club. and so really, we took whatever we could get. You know, it wasn't like we had a lot of choice. You know, we couldn't fight for diversity because we were a handful. I mean, and we, were, we would easily be blocked out if we 
said anything. So, so yeah, we, we, we worked and we got, when we, we, we tried to work as much as we could until we were able to get enough power to find a voice. Yeah. And I'm so glad that this is happening at this point. And I think it's social media that really has allowed us to be able to speak up. Yeah, I love that. One of the things that I really love about doing this work is that so much of art, as well as just this, is all points of reference, right? So for example, I grew up being like a loud mouth, round face, <laughs> you know what I mean, Chinese girl, and they're like, oh my God, you're like Margaret Cho. And I used to be like, oh, you only say that because that's the only person you can think of, <laughs> right? And then, and then you feel kind of offended because you're like, I feel pigeonholed. And then now I'm like, yo, Margaret Cho's dope, of course, I'm a stand-up comic, oh, that's a huge compliment. Um, I wanted you to tell your story about oh uh, sort of points of references. Because what I love is that because of social media, because of digital platforms, there's a lot more star making that can be happening. Now, they're not may they're maybe not sort of first tier, the proposal movie poster you know star making quite yet but I love that there's more points of references and I just love the story that you told us over brunch, At brunch. Or yeah <laughs> can you just I love this just yeah um, okay well I was telling Jenny about um, I went to do this table read for some animated episode or something and we're all sitting there and we have our name cards out you know it says Ali Monkey right there whatever and um, there was a producer it's a white male man and he was like hey he's like I really love your work. And I was like, oh, th thank you. <laughs> like, that's really nice. I don't have any idea what you would be talking about, but cool. And then he's like, yeah, and congrats on the baby. And I was like, oh, I was like, oh no, you're thinking of the other, I, I totally know there's another Ally. I get it, she's a comedian. That's, that's not me, I'm a different Ally. She's so Maki and her last name's Wong. And he's like, no, 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 like you, you have the, the comedy special and, and the baby and I was like, then he like went on to try and like kind of mansplain to me who I was. <laughs> and it was very confusing. I was like, maybe I am Ali, well, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know. And he just got very confused. I was like, it says right here at M-A-K-I and that's W-O-N-G, like that's very different. And, um, and I was like, no, like I promise you, that's not me, that's a different Asian girl named Ali. And he just kind of gave me this look like, Okay, and then he just walked off. Like, he, he didn't believe me. I think he thought I was lying or something. That to me, I just, I, I'm so sorry, but the cynical part of me just feels like that's like a microcosm of the kind of lens that white Hollywood has toward us, right? Yeah. Not only do you have to explain yourself over and over again, I'm gonna tell you who you are. And he didn't Absolutely. even apologize. Right? What? <laughs> I think Kelly's story, the fact that she can say Tia, Lucy, yeah. you know, and, and just, and Mingna, and then those are just the names that we, just first names and you know who we're talking about because there are just so few and they represent so, it's, it's, it's kind of ridiculous. But uh, to answer your question about, about the, the, the changes we've seen, you know, when I first started my blog in 2001, um, there were five people of Asian descent on primetime scripted network television, five. I counted, I went through every <laughs> single show and look at their cast and I counted yes. five, you know. And so if you just look at quantity in terms of numbers, I mean, it used to be we were just so invisible, and so there's so little, you know, examples you could point to. And Kelly brings up a great point. It's like you could just name these, you know, these four names, and that's all you had to go on. Uh, but now, I guess, like I, you know, there are so many more, and th also there's just so many shows and so many, so many opportunities now. You have to fill them up at least with some Asian somewhere in there, right? <laughs> so, you know, more than I, I used to be able to name all of them. Just like I could just tell you, but, and now, you know, there's just more, so many more you can't keep track of, which is a, which is a great thing, right? Um, I think the next step, though, beyond that, is allowing for shows featuring Asian Americans to, for us not to count on that to be the one that lifts us all up. Yeah. Like, Asian yeah. Americans have to be allowed to fail. We have to be allowed to be mediocre. We're supposed to have shows, like, there's so many shows out there featuring all white casts that are just like, just Man. middle of the road, and they've been on for like seven seasons. I've never seen a single episode of them but like they're allowed to just survive name and thrive, three. right? Uh, <laughs> name names. You know, uh, but then uh, I don't think, but then when a show like, like something like Fresh Off the Boat comes along, we have we put all our eggs in that basket. Yeah, we hosted a thing. Yeah, yeah we, we, we hosted a, a LA community viewing party of the first episode of Fresh Off the Boat. And I remember we were prepping for it because we were going to moderate a panel after it. And we just decided, oh, you know, you, me and Joanna, we're like, we need a word to describe this anxiety that we're feeling right now. 
on the precipice of seeing the first episode of the show, you know? And it's like, okay, what is it? And so we came up with a term. Who knows if it's gonna go viral? Rep sweats, representational sweats, hashtag rep sweats. It was used a little, it's fine. We don't need to talk about it. But my point is, we, but that's what we feel. When you're so invisible, Anything that comes up that remotely could get you kicked in the ass on the playground, you will get anxious about it, right? I mean, and that's us. About, like Margaret Cho's one, you know, wonderful show, and it was short-lived, and how long did it take because of that? It was like that almost represented that no, it will never work, which is ridiculous. So, you know, I feel like that anxiety, I, I still feel it, but it's just a little less now, no? Just a little less. Little, a little less, I guess. But uh, I, no, but I'm, uh, the rep sweats, that's something I grew up with my whole life. Just like, you see an Asian, oh man, represent, please represent. <laughs> <laughs> Which is kind of what Lynn's sanity was, right? What, and it was five games. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but it was five games. Hey. But it was. Never but it was, forget. It never did. Forget. It never forget. And it was a moment that um, that filled everybody, you know, just with so much pride. Um, and it was hard to communicate that to other people because it's hard to empathize with that little representation. And then it explodes on a national or international stage, and you you are so empathetic and vicariously living through Lynn's performance in those five games that it, it's hard to not feel, look, sound or look sentimental or, or disingenuous, but it was totally genuine. Um, I do think that everything we're talking about is sort of 1.0. It's like, get me on the sound stage and turn the camera on. I think 2.0, in my mind, is to go back to the Ryan Reynolds thing a little bit, or to go to why Fresh Off the Boat matters, or why what I, you're talking about, why Tyler Perry matters. Um, because the industry is stratified now, just like everything. The industry is targeted, the industry is dis disintegrated and like exploded. So there used to be four networks, before that three networks. Now there's, what, 500 or something. So um, it's sort of, sort of like Facebook, like, yes, there's Asian Americans on TV, but who's watching those Asian Americans? And rather than 17 million viewers watching The Cosby Show or Growing Pains, it's more like a one million or less than a million watching each show. So the reason why I think Fresh Off the Boat matters is because Randall literally might be the first Asian American that some people have met in this country. Yeah. And, and Jeffrey Tambor is the first trans, uh, trans, uh, transgender person that people, did anybody read this article about how people are only honest in their Google searches? Yeah. <laughs> Wall Street Journal. There, there was two articles. Yeah, one of them was about <laughs> how in certain parts of the world the autofill for how do I get my wife to the autofill number one autofill is breastfeeding. What? what? <laughs> sorry. Okay. Uh, sorry. Uh, 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 I'm fine. This is not taking a turn in that direction. I this is not taking a turn in that direction. But what I will say is, I bet there are people who are maybe outwardly racist or outwardly homophobic who love transparent yeah. or yeah. love fresh off the boat or can't get enough blackish. They love, they, or they don't even know Jim Parsons is a gay man. You know, like, and they, they eat up Big Bang Theory. This is our opportunity on the main, main street, in the mainstream level to enter your living room. And I think that's a big deal. That's, that's why Ryan Reynolds matters, not just hey, I have a recurring role on a TV show, or I guest starring on a, or I, you know, I got a, a scene with Leonardo DiCaprio in this movie. It's when you are on that poster, they know you. They let you into their living room every week. And that's, that's when real shit changes through arts and entertainment. I think that's 2.0. Yeah, so 2.0, I like that. Um, but Randall still has an accent in the show. That's true, Ish. but it's, it's, it, it's, it's weirdly, it's, yeah. like, this <laughs> is more than less. But I do know that there was, there definitely was, and not to put words into his mouth, but uh, I know that there was a conversation about that. Yes. Very much early on. So, um, you know, I fully support and say exactly what you've been saying. That, that is the first Asian, uh, maybe, face of the male that they've seen, um, yeah, that come into their living room, yet, it was that conversation of accent was still there. Is it an honest thing? Yeah. My dad has an accent. Like, and he's a first generation. Yeah, grown man. Like, um, Dude, you have an accent. <laughs> you have the accent. It's all perspective. It's all okay. perspective. <laughs> well, so, so let's talk about Crazy Rich Asians then. Yeah? So, so that is a potential for an international blockbuster 
Romantic comedy? What? Number one, who's making romantic comedies anymore? And now we're going to do an Asian one, right? And so if you're not familiar with this Kevin Kwan book that's being adapted, they're shooting in Singapore, Malaysia right now. It's literally just all the funny, there's more than just them, but there's a lot of funny um, Asian Americans who are being cast in these roles. And um, I wonder, uh, just using this as an example, how a, a film like Crazy Rich Asians complicates our role as Asian Americans in, in the fact that we're trying to advocate for diversity. For example, you know, um, with the thing that comes up with the Great Wall is, isn't it great that China is investing in something that actually shares about Chinese culture? That's an argument pro, right? That they are investing in it, it was an attempt at it. Why are you Asian Americans, you SJW social justice warriors, complaining about the fact that Matthew, you know, Matt Damon is actually putting his name in his face to something that's completely Chinese? So that was what I heard when I was criticizing the Great Wall, right? And so what, what, you know, what are we going to do around that? You know, what, what's going to happen with crazy rich Asians when it comes to representation? I mean, I'm such a huge fan of John Chu. I've, I've worked with him, and I know he's going to do a fantastic job. And when they were doing the casting, I, I uh, they did ask me to put myself on tape, but then immediately it was like they're going strictly exactly how you know the characters in the book, like true Chinese or true Singaporean, which is amazing. And I really like you, you know bow down to him for for doing that. I think it's it's important. Um, at the same time, like my interest goes so much further into just the Asian American, or not even Asian at all. It's just a girl, and that's who she is. You know, because I grew up watching TGIF. Like that's my jam. Like. I saw myself as any one of those girls, like Tiffany Amber Thiessen or whatever, like that's the stuff that I wanted, that resonated with me. And it wasn't until, and I thought, oh, I'm that girl, you know, I, I'm Lisa Turtle, I'm all those girls. And then I got out to the industry thinking, oh, I could just be that. And it, that was when I had a rude awakening of, oh no, sweetie, you're not that. Like, you're never gonna be that. You're gonna be the nerd in the corner or you're gonna have an accent and that's your two options. So I think it's so important for us to be creating ourselves so we can start to do kind of what Mindy did in terms of like, you just see her as Mindy now. So you're excited about Crazy Rich Asians, do you think it's going to be helpful for yeah, I think the we, cause? Yeah, I, mean, I, <laughs> I think just the more, the more the merrier at this point. Yeah. I actually have a question, and that's so interesting how you're saying that John, um, John really wanted to go authentic. And I'm asking kind of the groupers. I so don't have the answer is so like meaning if if a korean girl played malaysian then would that be horrible or is that are we, are we further kind of separating us or should, because i don't see that where superman was played by a british guy or you know a uh, you don't see that further kind of separation in that white world what should we do about that? I don't know. We've, we've become so specific in what we are fighting for that it, it works against us like you were saying. Like, I, I went up for a role that was Japanese. I happen to speak more Japanese than I do Chinese because I grew up in Hawaii and we had, you know, like, Jap everybody took Japanese as a second language. I worked and lived in Japan. I don't know, I know more about Japanese culture and, and language than I do about my own, Chinese. But he was like, the, the director was like, I even did the audition in Japanese. And, and I apparently have a very good accent, according to my Japanese friends. But he was like, you know we can't hire you, right? And I was like, why not? He says, because the Japanese community would be up in arms. Yeah, see, what I love is when, that like, when, when they're deciding to cast for the Native Hawaiian for Nihao in the movie, they're like, hey, the white guy will do, right? It's like a weird, it's like on the one hand, you're not Japanese enough, and it's very specific, and then they're like, mm, the white guy won't be great to be this native Hawaiian. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> right? And so, what, what yeah. We, well, I think we can play everything. I think we can play everything. Yeah. Right? It's like the O negative with O positive blood <laughs> of acting. Um, no, but I feel like that is, it's, I, I, I don't know where to come down on this, because on the one hand, you have this example where they're like, mm, honey, you're just not Japanese enough, and then they're like, oh, white guy, you're just Native Hawaiian enough? Yeah. I think that it is case by case, and I think it's power related. Yes. Like, um, Bill Maher idiotically said the N-word on his own show, and it opened this dialogue um, within the black community and within the, the media community about you know, the stupid, stupid dialogue that they have over and over again. Well, why can't I say it, you say it. Nice Cube had 
to me, like the best yes. line I've ever heard. And I can't believe people haven't said it. Maybe they have, but it was, that's our word now. You can't have it back. And, it's, yes. and, and I think that's like the perfect encapsulation. We took it from you. What are you gonna do? What do you, what do you want it back for, man? Like, <laughs> what are you gonna do with that word, buddy? You know, and like, so they took that power. And so everybody should just shut up about why some people can say it and I can't say it. Like, that's, that's a done conversation. And so if you're gonna cast Matt Damon as the lead in an Asian role, there's power dynamics at play there. If you're John Shu and you're one of the biggest trailblazing Asian directors, you have every right to do whatever you want within, within your own creative license. And so I think we have to take a look at each. I mean, John Lithgow played Winston Churchill. I was just watching Sherlock Holmes the other day, and like um, Jude Law is probably looking over at Rob Downey Jr. And like, this motherfucker. <laughs> like, how come he is Sherlock? Like, I'm Jude Law. You know, this American rat, you know, rat pack guy gets to be Sherlock. So I think within each situation, we have to look at, creatively speaking, not to, not to chip away at what acting is, because acting is playing other people. Yes. It's embodying something that you are absolutely not. And so I, I think it, it's also with respect, there's not a symmetry when it comes to a male-female relationship in the workplace. We have to be sensitive to that or to a gay-straight dynamic in, in, in the world. And so that's the same with casting. Yeah, I feel like earlier at noon, how many of you were at the trans conversation, right? I love that they were talking about, can there be a, a, a scenario where a cisgender person can play a trans character fully and well? Right? So they just post it to the, the panel, and what I love is, you know, one of the, the panelists said, you know, maybe, but I'm going to say no because there is a whole history of life that you go through when you are this trans person. And as much as you can be this amazing actor who, you know, they use Jared Leto from uh, whatever that movie, Dallas Buyers Club, um, as an example, say he immersed himself for two weeks, which they were saying it flippantly. You know, I, and I thought to myself, um, Denzel Washington, who's African American, apparently took a whole year just to prepare for Malcolm X. Something like that. Or like Will Smith took like a whole year to be Muhammad Ali. And they are black, playing black characters, okay? I'm like, you took a year? You know what I mean? Now that's commitment and acting like, I see like, we, I mean, it's a question of craft and artistry and choice and who get, you know, are you gonna and choose money. to? I mean, who can take money. a year off from their work to study one single <laughs> character and get paid no, for a single true. job? That's We're true. not making that kind of money. That's true, that's true. We need to be, we need to be making that kind of money for you, Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> Don't I know it. <laughs> to be full Japanese, a year of immersion, <laughs> right? Three mil, just life, life saving, you know, life, uh, lifestyle um, expenses, yeah. So I mean, I think that's what really blew my mind. It's like, let's think about, our, these are choices, right? So are we gonna be, you know, pay for Jared Leto to do two weeks of immersion? Or are we gonna get someone who maybe has a lot more that they already can bring to the table? I don't know. I think it, I think it matters when it matters, and it doesn't matter when it doesn't. I don't think it's healthy for some producer to be, make a blanket statement, oh, the Japanese community's gonna, like, Based on what? Like, are you like? I, I understand that people being sensitive, but sometimes it's it's super oversensitive the other way, where they, you know, and then like people are like, oh, what am I supposed to do? I'm walking on guys. Like, just fucking ask somebody, man. Like, yeah, just, yeah. Like, you know, like, yeah. do the research, you know. Because like, there isn't. There, don't be afraid. Let's yeah. be honest. Let's just name it. There is a scenario where you know our our beautiful white liberal friends. You know who you are. Sometimes. Sometimes white liberal Hollywood or white liberal friends will get more offended about something on our behalf, <laughs> right? Where, you know, it's like there's a spectrum of offensiveness where they're like, oh, I am so sorry they said, oh my God, oh my God, I am crying. Like they get into the, it escalates for them. I am so hurt for you, you know, like, you're like chill, I'm, I'm cool. Like, you know, and I love that. But then again, how is that going to keep us from moving forward, right? And I feel like that's somewhat of an example of that. Right, where they're like, I'm cool with it. Can we talk to the Japanese community? Are they gonna be cool with it? Was that producer white? Yeah. Oh my yeah. God. Wow. Yeah. Well, he knows. <laughs> Settles that. He's like, we cannot do this to the Japanese people. You know what I mean, right? <laughs> Kelly, that was brilliant, but, okay, cool. Um, I would love, and you know, um, let's just take a stab at this. I'm gonna just throw it out there, like a little, like a little scenario. Like, let's pretend we are all like the the brain trust of 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 Hollywood, and we're going to move diversity and representation of Asian Americans and otherwise forward. And we get to create the game plan. 
All right, let's pretend that we can brainstorm that. And for some reason, we're gonna do it because someone's gonna do it. It's gonna happen. What would it look like all around? What would you wish would happen? What is the plan to move everything forward? I think the first thing I would do is hire creatives who are Asian or of other ethnicity because that's where it all starts. It all starts on the piece of paper and with, you know, and then hiring, you know, in the offices and hiring these people and then, and then also, I don't know if you guys have touched on this yet. Go ahead. But you don't see any Asian men in romantic lead roles, the Asian American men in romantic lead roles. That needs to start happening. Yeah, so hire the writers. Let's get some Asian right. men in, in lead roles, romantic roles. Let's keep going. By the way, have you seen Leo in Sister of the Traveling Pants? Yes! yes. yes. You guys can just Google.com. Yeah. Just check out Google.com hashtag. Hot! But here's the thing is, if Leo we is. don't start seeing more Asian men in romantic lead roles, Asian men are not going to be thought of as romantic. As, and I'm sorry, but that's where people are getting their information, their, their ethics and morals, is from television and internet. Days. May God help people us. Don't no, I'm kidding. Anymore. <laughs> you know, people no, don't experience life anymore either. Yeah. But um, but yeah, well, that's that's what we have to do. We have to start creating it so people will think it. Yeah. What else? What else are we adding to this game plan? You know, we do live in an age where you create and then you move on. Yeah. Move on. Move on. Move on. And the more we create, the more that we uh, find a, a unified voice. If everything is so rep sweats. If, if we get rep sweats all the time, uh, then you know that can be paralyzing. The internet. There are no creative people, or there are no people at the top deciding who's going to get the views and who's going to, yes. you know, get the the most audience. And Asian people are represented very well there. Oh yeah. So the there's definitely something holding us back. Yeah. You know, it's not as though. You know, uh, in, in the internet, there's a board and people deciding, and you know, it, it, people are making choices to watch whatever they want. And there are so many stars on YouTube and, you know, and Instagram and, and whatnot that are Asian. And I think we even have a bigger chunk of the pie there that in, you know, considering our actual representation, our, our actual demographics. Creators. For sure, but I think you're getting at something which is, it's on us a little bit. Like, there is there is something internally, but something anathema to self-promotion within somewhere in our DNA that needs to push what is already prolifically evident, like, through the membrane of, because it's there and it's everywhere, but something's not being promoted. And and to your point about the creators, I, I, I actually, this is a country where people drink venti coffee is like three, we, this is a country of excess. We can handle what I would, what I guess I would call a wave. You know, like in the, in the French New Wave happened in the 40s and 50s and you had Italian explosions with Coppola and Scorsese. There could be like, and right now we're living through a Mexican and Spanish wave with Guaron and Del Toro and all, and Iñárritu and all these guys. Every year, those guys are winning the Oscar. Every year. There could be an Asian American wave. What's our wave? Like, there's a, there could be literally like a dozen filmmakers all within five years. It is such a thing that's already happened. In this this call for diversity inclusion and inclusion, this, this entire conversation here and this, this, this day, yes. like that, the, the thing that makes this all interesting is because people have sort of risen up and said, we're not taking this anymore. And it, it comes from the fact that people are like recognizing, I want to have a conversation about this and pushing back. And that's why it goes to the, something like Ghost in the Shell that could have happened five years ago. No one would have blinked an eye. Yeah. Honestly, the same movie could have come out. It would have been one person. would have shrugged. One person sending a press release. Right. That guy who, like, it would have been me on the on my blog. Yeah. Being like, <laughs> Fuck this shit. Who the angry guy? But that that movie comes out now, and people are like recognizing, like, yo, this shit has been happening for a very long time. I'm not taking it anymore, you know. And and you look at that, and it, it, that is. People point to that. People like studios now, like the studio press release after Ghost to Shell, they're so shitty at the box office. They said, ah, the whitewashing controversy, that kind of, that, kind of, that I was like, I was like, no, you made a bad movie. We should, we should flex our power. You know what I mean? Maybe it was a shitty movie, but fuck it. He claimed on, on in the press that whitewashing controversy hurt us. 
Exactly. Yeah, so what do you Take do it. about it, right? Like you need to just continually call them out every single time because half the time they don't even know. I had, a, I had a meeting recently with a manager and she was like, I was talking about diversity and how important it is to me and she's like, well, I feel like you guys are doing pretty good. I mean, you have Lucy Liu. I go, wow, like this is, like really? This is only a couple months ago. And I was, I left the meeting like really flabbergasted that that even happened. I feel like independent film is, is built on the generosity of your collaborators and, and um, the community around you. And, and having just finished the movie that was so impossible to make without the kindness of my friends and people, like I, I want to be generous back to to my community and to like all the filmmakers who might be in this room too. I, I, I would say that like your burden is my burden and, and I want to show your dream if you carry mine too. So like it's like um, like what you were saying about the waves, Calvin um, Calvin, like um, I remember like reading an article about how like Unity Two and Codon all went to a college together and they've been supporting each other like throughout their whole like creative career and like um, I feel like we're on the cusp of that too. Like oh we've been there's Andrew, there's so many like Andron and, and and he's he's doing such great work and you know it's like we're 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 getting there together as a group. There's always if you ever are are needing to connect, there's always Cape Coalition for Asian Pacifics and Entertainment. There's yeah, shout out to Cape. Um, and there's also um, there's also Run API. That's like a new that new Ooh, thing that's been formed by by Brad Jenkins and Chloe Bennett um, and others. Um, you know, my, I'd like to thank our comedy festival and the Story of Comedy Network. We've been creating it. Asian AF, Asian as fuck, and Scarlett Johansson presents APIA Heritage Month at UCB with Will Choi and Homie Will Choi. You know what I mean? We've been organizing the comedy community, and we really hope that, like, when it's time, that as we're working on our craft and we're still staying connected and not losing out on, because of the law of attrition in Hollywood, so we got to promote it for each other, with each other, make it with each other. Can I just throw out a quick story? My friend, okay, so my friend, she's a... She's a, a screenwriting student at UCLA. She wrote this beautiful script called Rose. It's about uh, Rose Pack, this like uh, San Francisco political Chinatown power broker, like you know, and, and her the beginnings of her career, right? And it's this, this, this awesome little script she wrote for her um, for the assignment, you know, for UCLA, right? Um, and she won an award for it, and so they put out her email address on the program for the award ceremony and stuff like that. And um, I will say, I, I don't know if I should. I won't name the person who did, but someone who's a, who's a, who's the producer of a network show who's Asian American reached out to her and said, "Like, I saw your script. She told me this. I saw your script. Let's have a copy. I just want to talk to you. I see something great, and like, just she he saw something raw and, and wanted to just like help this like new you know this screenwriter just coming up. Just you know, what if it's just for advice? But like, you know, just to have that someone reach out and sort of validate and confirm that. I mean, that's super powerful, right? I want a mentor." And and here's the thing is we are we are in a stage now where our, our parents or grandparents were immigrants. They came here, they struggled, everybody got their educations, and this is like the next couple of generations where people have become more successful in all different parts of the industries, not just doctors and lawyers, but you know, these all in all in all aspects. This is the time for us to start mentoring other people. To it's help sleep ourselves, cells, community. and then we're gonna activate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. Is that not a good? Sorry, that's not a good. If you think about it, like if, if, if there were only, if, if at the beginning there was only a handful, right? And now, if they turn around and we go on the belief that we all stand on other people's shoulders, then we turn around and we each give out to five. Then that yes. multiplies. It does. And then it that helps. multiplies within that. Yeah. So we have to wrap up, and so for us to wrap up, I thought I would go, we would sort of pose one question, uh, that is, if, if you could play your dream role that you feel like hasn't been seen, be as specific as possible, or write that dream part, or, what, or fund that dream story, what would it be? Okay. Bond. James Bond. <laughs> that I've, I've written, and it's about Hawaii. And it's about growing up in Hawaii. Just a young girl growing up in Hawaii. And, um, you know, for me, that's very specific. Love it. And my grandma, during uh, the internment camps, and my grandfather, who was in the 442nd. So, I will be making that. Yes, you can. Yes. 
I would love to see something on, you know, on television that is not, that is completely subtitled in an Asian language that is accepted by everybody and they're willing to read it. My dad came here in 1966. Uh, he got a scholarship to Mississippi State. Oh, His passport says he was five foot three, 106 pounds. So um, I think that's pretty funny. Yeah, I want to see that story. Anyone else? I would like, I'm not an actor, so I'd like to play this, but I would like to see this. I just thought of it right now. Uh, I would like to see a, a show set in a hospital where, like, it, and it centers on the nurses, and all the entire cast is like Korean and Filipino. All these ideas that we just came up with, or if you want to support Ali's project, or let's just make that happen. This is the moment we can we can say that diversity speaks at this panel. That was the beginning of something beautiful. Yeah. Right. But my name is Jenny Yang. Follow me online at JennyYang.tv or at Jenny Yang TV, and let's talk about this. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for having us. Kelly, Bruce, Leo, Gloria. Oh, yes!